it wasn't a day of a fire, it was a night of a fire, which I think is a more scary thing than anything. Because the night of the fire, I'd already gone to bed, and if my phone rang, my daughter-in-law said, there's a fire on Cross Forest Road. Got in the car, the fire was already at the neighbour's house, and the heat that hit me here, I couldn't have stood in front of it, it was so intense. And the fire was actually rolling like a wave. That was how, it was just a wall of flame coming straight towards you. And I got out and went to the neighbours next door. So it probably wasn't until the, the power station at Tarang actually caught fire. So we knew as soon as it had happened. So we looked out and we could actually see the glow in the sky coming from Tarang. We knew we were in trouble then. We knew that, you know, we we're in the direct line. Huge surprise, yeah, we weren't expecting anything. And obviously the conditions were bad, but yeah, that we weren't expecting a fire. Living so close to town on probably what you'd deem the safe side of town, the south side. We were lucky we didn't have to run from it or, yeah. Um, yeah, when we left home, it was just any other night that was, yeah, there was no threat at all. So, um, yeah, just things, things turned after that. A neighbour rang to say that Cobby K was being evacuated and I thought, my goodness, I better go too. So I rang up my friend in Cobden and asked if I could come and stay with her. And of course she said yes. So I packed a small bag and off I went. And I was really shocked to find that just up the road I could see flames because when I had come home earlier, I had no idea there were no flames there. So in that short time, perhaps three quarters of an hour, there were flames. You really thought for the first few days, how the hell am I going to get out of this? you got nothing, it's just all burnt out and it's black and it's blowing and it's windy and the dust and the, bloody, and the smoke and stuff that came into the house. It was just unbelievable. I think it was about nine o'clock, he got collected by some people in the CFA and he went out. Uh, he then rang me and said, look, our house is still there. Mum and Dad's house is all right. There were still trees burning, sheds burning, you know, fences burning, all of that. And yeah, somehow the, the cattle have managed to come home. As soon as we got to getting close to here that we sort of knew that we were in a bit of strife and got to the top of the hill and trees were burning and looked like house, two sheds were burning. So we didn't even bother coming any closer than the end of the bitumen road. We turned around and um, went back in and then come a couple of hours later. It just was like a scene out of a movie. There was just every fence post that we drove past, every tree, everything seemed to be on fire. It was probably surreal at the time. We probably just couldn't really comprehend what had happened and um, it probably wasn't until the days and weeks following that it really, really soaked in what had happened. There was a, a wind event and a fire event, but later on there was also a peat event and it was the peat event, I think, that had a lot of impact on what happened later and in the town. I lost cattle, I lost all the fences, external fences, which meant the cattle, I did not know whether I had any cattle left when I come back on the place. I didn't lose a big percentage, I only lost a small percentage, but that's a, a terrible thing to see your stock burnt and have to put them down, that's even worse. You might get burnt yourself and you'd, you'd put up with it, but to see your stock that you've been breeding for all these being burnt is a shocking thing. We had stables and dairies and shearing sheds and it was all just a twisted metal and you know you sort of look around and after you've sort of done dealt with the livestock um, you sort of think how, how are we ever going to clean this up? The next day that was that was very hard to watch um, wasn't so much our cattle but neighbouring uh, cattle from neighbouring properties and they were wandering around and you know needed to be put down and and um, yeah that was that was pretty awful. I think there was we accounted for was it 40 out of 45 of our yeah. of our cows. Um, someone had let them out of the paddock and um, herded them to safety. So uh, we were really lucky on that front. I haven't been as badly impacted as a lot of people. I've lost uh, an area of land. I've lost an area of trees, uh, an area of the landscape that was precious to me. So I'm feeling quite sad about that. It'll be a long time before it regrows and probably never in my lifetime will I see it again the way it was. You have days of, 
of desperation in yourself. There's no good being brave and saying it doesn't happen. It bloody well does happen. And some days you, you'll go good for weeks and then for some reason or other something triggers it and you'll have real downers. Maybe one or two days you've got to go and take off and go somewhere or go and see a friend and have a yarn or whatever because without that it would drive you absolutely down to the bottom. But I think I've managed to, to pull through that one until we had a day like Friday and then the whole thing comes back again. Blaze Aid people, they were incredible. The first job was to put up external fences and that's what they done, and done a good job of it. When they go out to help put up fences, the first thing they want to do is talk to you and just have a bit of a yarn first and say, well, come and have a cup of, in the morning. Come and have morning tea with us. And then you work out that they're not just there to put fences up. I'm going to get a nice place. Okay. There, no. They're there to, to make sure you're okay, you know. At the start, you're proud and you think, I don't want help, like I can, I can do without help. Um, and we've always worked hard and we've got a lot of energy and we can do it ourselves. Um, but then you realise that, you know, these people are out here to help. So I, I guess the main organisation was Blaze Aid. I just can't speak highly enough of, of what they did. You know, they're an absolute inspiration. It's probably overwhelming in, you know, how, how kind people are from, you know, like one, one friend, he, he farmed himself and he, he said, I'm going to come down every day and, and help your fence because it means Scott can go ahead and you can, um, I can help tie off and do things like that with you. And so his wife was sort of getting up at 4.30 in the morning to cook us our tea. So he'd bring our tea, you know, just you think, how do you ever repay people for that kindness and the effort they put in? Within 24 hours of the fire, I think we had been offered about three houses um, in Terang. From the minute it happened, it, just the support by everyone around us was, was amazing. We had uh, family members out here the next day rolling up fences and, um, yeah, just huge amounts of people that just came from everywhere to help us out. There's been an amazing amount of support given by many people, locally, even interstate. And after the fires happened, I heard that um, our United Church op shop was asked to open early in the morning, in the middle of the night really, so donations were coming in there. It's very humbling to have people turn up with hay for you or turn up to, to help you do something and you you don't really realise how how much that meant until oh, a couple of days after they've been here sometimes. But they and you try to thank them but you they say it doesn't matter. It does matter but to you it matters, but to them they've just decided they were going to do something good and they've done it. But there are a lot of good people out there, a lot of good people. You've always got to be resilient in, in if you're anything to do with land. There's always something that's going to come and whack you about a bit. So it's just something you've learnt over the years, only this one is a bit heavier and a bit bigger than others. Get out there and have a go every day. One of the things I learnt particularly was um, right at the start was you'd, you'd have days and you'd say to yourself, well, what am I going to do today? You must keep a, a notebook. Write down every day what you plan to do today and tick them off. You probably just learn about your strength as a person and you, you always hope that you, you give your children the right values. And I guess uh, as you watch them operate and cope with the whole situation, you think, yeah, yeah, they've done well. Since um, the house has started and we've got that to, to focus on, that's been really good. It's been really busy. We've been flat out um, doing as much as what we can to speed things up. But I think being busy has meant that we haven't had time to dwell on what's happened. and we can just think about the future and getting back out here. I see myself in six months to a year being right where I am now. I'm very fortunate to live in this beautiful community. I have a lovely garden that I really enjoy working in and I just love this area. I have a beautiful view down to Lake Cobrico. I love the people 
It's a great place. I have everything here, everything I need. I think my community is really resilient and supportive. I think just the care um, that they've shown to everybody is amazing. And you, like I said, you just try and think, how, how do you say thank you? So we just, my son made up nice cards with pictures and my daughter wrote a nice verse and we just sent one out to everyone who helped us. So just to say thanks. The one word that best describes our community, I would think is connected. It might seem like a strange word, but we're a very well connected community. We're connected to each other through various means. Uh, we're able to help each other. We put out appeals, the appeals are answered. I asked Rose, my daughter, that question and she said, caring, um, yeah, just, and that's probably sums it up really that, um, yeah, everyone's just um, done whatever they can to, to make sure that we're okay. Oh, bloody brilliant. That's two words for you. Not just bring it, but bloody bring it. <laughs>